Every year, NASA does something really cool. It goes through this process known as NASA Innovative Advanced Concepts, which is an intriguing way for NASA to select new ideas and new propositions, usually coming directly from the public, although normally from various research organizations and from various labs around the world, which so far has served as a really important way to encourage innovation by essentially allowing various proposals from outside of NASA itself. And if these proposals end up being really interesting, they basically get funded and eventually become actual projects. You can actually see some of the previous proposals in one of the links in the description, but now we have access to all of the selections from 2024. Now this is just phase one, and so these are not actually funded yet, but one of these projects does propose an exciting new way to potentially travel through space. This is a project proposed by James Bickford from Charles Stark Draper Laboratory, and it's a project referred to as Thin Film Isotope Nuclear Engine Rocket that basically resembles something like this for now. And in essence, this is a slightly different take on the technology known as radioisotope rockets, or sometimes also referred to as the fission fragment thrusters, that have been explored from as far back as 2005, with the project tackling a really intriguing question. Can alpha particles produced through nuclear decay be directly used to generate propulsion? Or in other words, can we use nuclear radiation to push things in space through the use of kinetic energy? With the answer being yes. With this proposition essentially building on years of research in order to create a potential prototype that could technically work really well in space. But right before I explain how this would work, here's why this is not the same as other nuclear engines proposed in different other studies or previously used for other missions. For example, the famous RTGs or radioisotope thermoelectric generators have been also proposed to be used in various nuclear engines. But in this case, they would work slightly differently. They would actually heat up something on the inside, usually changing some kind of a gas into something more ionized and then releasing this at very high velocities from one of the ends. And the thing is, NASA is actually testing some of these engines, specifically nuclear thermal rockets, that they hope to one day use for a mission to Mars. With the engine potentially even using an actual nuclear reactor in order to heat up gas on the inside, ionizing it in the process and allowing it to escape at very high velocities. Here it's actually most likely going to be something like hydrogen that's going to be ionized and propelled from one of the ends. But these types of rockets would be extremely expensive and also very difficult to produce. And though in theory it would definitely work, this is not something we can scale easily and currently could only be used for some of the most expensive and most extreme missions. So once again, for example, if we want to get to Mars a little bit quicker. Yet what's proposed here is much simpler, much more scalable and definitely way cheaper. In essence, it would work under a very similar principle to a typical solar sail. Here it would use very thin sheets stretch to create a relatively large area in order to produce high momentum. But instead of using the sun, where the photons push against the sail to produce momentum, here the thrust is actually generated by the products that decay from the radioactive elements. And the first proposition was to use thorium-228, a radioactive metal widely used in medical fields that goes through alpha decay with a half-life of 1.9 years. And so the idea here is to cover the sail in a relatively thin layer of this material, approximately 10 micrometers in thickness. And so with a solar sail size of a typical tennis court, we would require approximately 30 kilograms or around 65 pounds of thorium-228 in order to create this relatively simple sail. Now there's not much more info provided in this particular proposition, but the thing is this is not a new proposition. Quite a lot of papers exist about this and quite a lot of them agree that this is viable and very likely would definitely work. You can find some of these papers in the description below and surprisingly the ones I found were all from China. And so this is actually something that China seems to be working on as well. But in a nutshell, the principle here is really simple. You have an absorption layer that's going to absorb some of the alpha decay and then you have the other side that's going to absorb nothing. And as a result, that's going to produce overall momentum toward the absorption layer, which actually can be moved. Or it can be tilted just a little bit in order to change the direction of thrust. And so in essence, this unusual sail creates a very efficient method of moving around in space without a lot of complex technology involved. All of this is already available and widely used, and none of this is actually that expensive. And in terms of propulsion, this will be extremely efficient. So the calculations from the study so far 
suggests that we can actually produce over 150 kilometers per second of thrust by just using thorium-228. Now here, this is actually known as delta V, or basically the change of velocity, and 150 kilometers per second literally means we can go in any direction in the solar system and pretty much visit any object out there. Although I think it's maybe a little bit easier to imagine this if I give you a physical example from an actual mission that's now finished that was the record holder for the highest delta V. And that mission was using ion engines. To date, the most efficient engines for use in outer space. And here I'm referring to the incredible Dawn mission that you can learn more about in the description that basically got to visit Ceres and Vesta, becoming the only mission ever to assume an orbit around two separate objects in the solar system. And that's because this mission was technically a record holder for the highest velocity change, highest delta V, 11.5 kilometers per second or 7.1 miles per second. And this was enough for it to visit both Ceres and Vesta, studying both for almost a decade. But for this craft, approximately 425 kilograms of xenon had to be used for propulsion. Not to mention that the mission itself was also extremely heavy and very complex and contained really large solar panels. In comparison, this only requires 30 kilograms of thorium, roughly equivalent to a typical weight very often used for RTGs, with the total velocity change of at least 10 times higher, if not more. And that's super efficient. Not to mention that this can then also be used to produce energy. Instead of using solar panels, here, the particle decay itself can then be used to create up to 50 kilowatt of power using a somewhat similar but less efficient method to what's used inside RTGs. And here it's estimated to be maybe only 1% efficient because this is not a perfect shape for this. Nevertheless, it is going to be able to produce energy and thus power the probe. And so in essence, these unusual sail-shaped probes can physically allow us to travel to any location in a solar system and work quite efficiently for at least two years. And though it would mostly be used for uncrewed missions, mostly because putting people in this is just going to make it extremely inefficient in terms of weight, one of the most interesting things this could be used for is to basically visit and possibly even recover samples from various interstellar asteroids, such as the famous Oumuamua. Because these objects move so fast and go through the solar system at extremely high velocities, producing something like this would take way too long and would never really reach them in time. Yet a solar sail powered by nuclear decay can actually be launched relatively quickly and can then achieve very high velocities relatively quickly as well, thus allowing us to recover physical samples from any future interstellar asteroid that might be discovered in the next few years. Here, for example, by changing thorium into something with much longer half-life, we can actually dramatically increase the efficiency of the mission by slightly decreasing overall acceleration. And so, for example, by using something like thorium-233 that can then be converted to uranium-232, the efficiency can be increased by at least five times. Which means that even higher delta V or change in velocity becomes possible, allowing these probes to reach very high velocities, possibly even up to a thousand kilometers per second, in just a few years. And that means reaching a lot of objects on the outskirts of the solar system in mere years instead of decades. Now, we're probably not going to be going to Alpha Centauri with this, mostly because the speeds here are still relatively low, but we could physically recover samples from some of the asteroids in the solar system, even the ones super far away. And so, in theory, this is actually a really exciting proposition for a very efficient engine. Way more efficient than ion engine, and obviously way, way cheaper. And so, for all we know, maybe in the next few years, NASA might actually pick this project and develop something out of this after all. For now, though, this is still just phase one, meaning that they're interested, but we're not certain if this is going to receive anything just yet. And so until we discover what's going on with this, or until someone else proposes something even cooler, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. You can find all of the links in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.